Analysis. Destiny 2, the final shape pre-order seemed to be less than 25% of Lightful's total figures. This is based on the pre-order exclusive emblems for expansions applied on all public Destiny 2 profiles. Data provided us by Charling Bot. Welcome to the counselor's office. I'm Mr. Gaming Counselor. How's it going? We are back with some more reacts in Destiny 2. I just did a video on, with Asked Across the Channel. We are here again because during that video, he talked about this video about the Final Shape pre-order numbers uh, are concerning. And so there's an article that I have not really seen. And so we're going to watch his take on it. And then I'm going to give my take on it because uh, if I do it, it's going to be like three hours video of going over and reading everything. So I'm going to let him read for me and figure it out while I, uh, I react to it. So let's go. The Final Shape pre-order seemed to be less than 25% of Lightfall's total Figures. Oh, yeah, that's pretty bad. Fuck. This is based on pre-order exclusive emblems for expansions applied on all public destiny profiles. I mean, that's bad. In the way you see it, it's bad. Charlemagne. Oh, my Lord. Stream is about to derail for just a moment. I hope you guys don't mind, but this is um, that's pretty big news. I'm curious it know, is. If, how they came up with that figure, though, more than anything. Whether the figure is right or not, I think it's so, still think correct Destiny's, that pre-orders are down. I actually love Destiny still, but... Again, I'm, I'm more interested to know how they came up with... Again, I love Destiny 2. But I've enjoyed walking away from it because the season, the season has nothing of real value to me. I have to find some way to make it fun for myself, and that's always a bad thing. When the player has to try to make their own fun out of a game versus a game naturally being fun as they play it. And now, obviously, if you play a game and you're like, this isn't fun because it's not your kind of game. Destiny has already been a game that's been fun to me. It's just literally the content currently that they've added is not fun. These, these numbers. Let's, let's start, though. Analysis. Destiny 2, the final shape pre-orders appear to be less than a quarter of Woo! Line Falls. February 26th, so not too long ago. Which we've read a number of articles from Zahad here. The game post analysis shows Destiny 2, the final shape, has the lowest numbers of pre-orders when compared to the pre-orders for the last three expansions. That is pretty In bad. In the ever-evolving world of Destiny 2, Pre-order figures have always been a critical indicator of player anticipation and overall interest in annual expansions. And as an avid Destiny 2 enthusiast, delving into the realm of pre-order data has unveiled intriguing insights into the upcoming expansion, The Final Shape. The Final Shape will be the last expansion in Destiny's 10-year-long Light versus Darkness saga. The expansion was initially planned to be released later this month on February 27th, 2024. However, due to Destiny 2 underperformance, lower than expected pre-order numbers for The Final Shape, and revenue projections Woo! running below for the year Bungie decided to delay the release until june 4th, i'm glad they did or and laid off well they also had internal people play the, play it and said it's good but not great which is not what you want to hear for your final expansion eight percent of his workforce in october 2023 as reported by bloomberg and ign both the witch queen and lightfall expansions were successful in terms of sales the witch queen not only succeeded in the sales but also received praise for its story activities and the raid, it, it did. Which was it did. Great. Fantastic. However, the same cannot be said for Live Ball. No. Live Ball achieved sales success. It did not deliver the penultimate storytelling experience that most fans hoped for, which resulted. No, the story was so bad. The story was so freaking bad, dude. And poor reception from critics and fans. On the other hand, The Witch Queen not only succeeded in its sales, but also received praise for its story, activities, and the raid. I would definitely put a big emphasis on the raid. I mean, the raid for the, for the Witch Queen. I I just didn't expect that level, especially like the day one experience. For it was. This is probably the penultimate boss fight. Was Rolk. People were wowed to see a boss, and, and it just is this very flat area, the stage, nothing fancy, and you just had to survive. It was a gauntlet of being able to kill him. And not die. I think that was huge. So huge. And it was a challenge. It wasn't easy to do. Rolk was not easy. And people really struggled to beat him. I know I joined a team that made it all the way to Rolk. And the team just couldn't do it because someone always died. Because they people did, were so aggressive. And people are used to being aggressive for DPS. Or standing in a well. And this boss destroyed wells and bubbles. Like, you could not just sit in one spot. You had to move around. And people loved that. That was a good challenge. That was a good raid boss. Unfortunately, Nezarak was a, an attempt at that, but they made the whole platform 
the whole area of the platform. So being able to avoid it was easier. And just in general, it was just a worse boss all around. It was so good. Now, data sources, caveats, and methodology. The data used in this analysis is provided to the game post by Charlemagne, the war mind of Discord. A third party. The war mind of Discord, man. Directly Woo. Directly from Bundy's API for Destiny. However, our, how this works is that Charlemagne scans all unique Destiny profiles, which amounts to around 66 million, to track every account that has acquired the pre order bonus emblems for the expansion. Holy crap. These emblems can only be acquired if a player pre-orders the expansion. Okay, so guys, I'm sure most of you are probably familiar with Charlemagne. We use Charlemagne for... Yeah, you know, I never use them. ...within Destiny. If we're ever so, the way I, I've known it is... I know that people talked about it with the gun, the hand cannon. In Season of... Uh, the, of is it The Deep? It was supposed to be a gun that was supposed to be released with light Lightfall. Which, there was other weapons that are on the promotional of Lifefall that you just, we never got. In fact, there was another activity that was advertised with Lifefall that we didn't get either. Which <laughs> just goes to show how bad Lifefall it is. But we finally got it. And the mount, they hid it all at the bottom of the map where no one could see it. So the percentage of people actually acquiring this gun was like point something something. Or one, or yeah, zero point three percent or something god awful it was so stupid it's not even a random roll it's just a pre-generic trash hand cannon the model looks amazing it's so cool and it's such a shame that it didn't get random rolls if there was ever a reskin i hope it happens it's to that gun model because it's really good looking and just it shades really well too but the point is it does track Charlemagne, I guess. I don't know if it's the same website, but they do track like percentage of who owns what. And so what they're trying to say is so many people actually have the emblem showing that they pre-ordered. But I think that only is good if you like I get emblems or codes for emblems, but I don't redeem them. I think these emblems are sent to the kiosk. And if you don't claim them, you don't have them. So I'm wondering if that's the case, if it actually shows them in the kiosk as the total amount or if it's just people who actually fully uh, claim it. We're trying to pull numbers for specific things. So this is this is Charlemagne's website. You can add okay. it to your Discord. I'm pretty sure all of our data, though, is all provided by Charlemagne, right? Oh, oh. Not Alexander everyone grabs said, the emblem from the kiosk. Alexander hey, I said that. Everyone grabs the emblem from the kiosk, though. I, I, I don't think it's yep. only counting emblems that have been picked up right it would still be on their account because it's it's unlocked that's what i'm wondering right so my question is based on what you guys are saying so you're saying that the numbers here could be better considering there are maybe a number of people that didn't grab it but dude these are destiny players how yeah. many destiny players wouldn't grab that's the, true um, let's let's read this important note. and i said it in the other video before watching this people are over there comparing emblems based on the value like oh this is expensive emblem like it's so stupid people just get crazy over emblems in general but just to get crazy over like the rarity and the cost of it like are you selling your account no then who the crap cares like <laughs> out of all the flexes we're gonna be pulling out emblems wow you're you're so cool <laughs> That says the Meanwhile, Joe over here spent his life doing speed runs, and he does what half the community or majority community can never do. I'm more impressed about that guy than your dinky little expensive uh, emblem. Wow. Important to note that the data provided here may not be the exact representation of the official numbers as there are some limitations. For instance, Charlemagne cannot access the data of players who have set their profiles to private mode, which makes them approximately less than 1% of the total player base. Ooh. Additionally, the data does not reflect the pre-order emblems that are not acquired from the in-game vendors. Master Raul and Special Delivery Kiosk. As a result, there may be a difference between the numbers presented here and the official figures for the expansions. Oh. Okay. We are comparing the pre-orders for four Destiny 2 expansions beyond light, the Witch Queen, Life on the Final Shape. Let's take a look at the exclusive emblems available to players who pre-ordered any edition of these expansions. The pre-order exclusive emblem for beyond this light is any, is any of this actually important? I'm just I'm g i am I know like I since really life all follows in second place with the witch queen in third place and the final shape having the lowest pre -order. I'm just skipping ahead because now, this they're talking about emblems here. Previous expansion, Life released in February 2023. 
has around 2.249 million estimated lifetime pre-orders. The Witch Queen, released in 2022, has 2.244 million lifetime pre-orders. And Beyond Light, released in 2020, and has 3.189 million lifetime pre-orders. So the point is... Beyond Light had that many pre-orders? That's yeah. crazy. More yeah, because you got to think. The reason why Beyond Light had so many pre-orders is because it introduced the first darkness subclass. That it wasn't just light. We're talking about darkness. People were hyped for that. Then Witch Queen? What was, what was going on? What was going on with Beyond stasis. Light? Stasis. I mean, I know we had stasis. Oh, yeah, that's right. COVID. Well, COVID. that too. We didn't have... That's true, COVID. That's to do. <laughs> well, I think, but you, I think we're underplaying stasis a little bit. You've got to think, in all of Destiny history, we've only done the light. This is the first time we've had access to darkness. People have been wanting darkness for so long. So, yes, COVID definitely mattered. But I also am going to tell you that I think we're underselling the value that people put on being able to have access to a darkness subclass. I forgot. We were all at home. Well, you know, here's the thing, too. We had Beyond Light. We were pitching it as well. Like, it was pitched to me that we were heading into, like, Destiny 3 territory. Remember the whole, um, the the update we were supposed to be getting or the, you know, the... I the think I vaguely remember like, this. The dynamic weather system was a really Oh, big yeah, deal. people that thought we were... They, that it, there would be these... People were thinking we were, they're sunsetting stuff because they're trying to move into, we were going to get... Destiny 3, and so they want to get rid of all the old content so we can get new Destiny 3 stuff. Again, this, the community has always been copium and hopium for Destiny 3. I have, I have no reason to believe that will ever happen. At least not this current state. These graphical updates throughout Destiny. I don't know. For some reason, and it, we're actually making a video on this. For some reason, though, Destiny 2 seems to look worse graphically than it did before Beyond Light. But that's, that's Maybe. what this is about. Uh, but COVID obviously boosted these numbers. Now, here are, here are the estimated pre-order numbers. for Ooh, all the Oh, my now. God. Beyond Light, almost 3.2 million. Witch Queen, 2.25. Lifefall, 2.249. And the final shape. Yo. Oh, my God. That is not even a mil. 1,601. Dude, that is, this is awful. It is Guys, bad. If this is the case, if this is real, Holy shit, that's terrible. Now, look, look, look I'm just going to say from my my own experience during the final shape reveal, uh, we're watching it and everybody's in there, you know, we're all kind of like taking in all the information, right? But, uh -huh. dude, it was so different than Lifefall because so many were like, eh, yeah, I think I'm going to wait. And I think that's, and it's, it's very important because I felt the same way about final shape. I was more hyped for season of the wish when they showed the trailer for that. The, or not season of the witch season of the witch season of the witch i was like oh my god Aerith is becoming a hive god that's hype what is this crap that you're selling me in final shape it was just it was so bad i've never been so unhyped about it in my life there was nothing in there like i think another big issue that people have is the simple fact that there was no witness. Really, I didn't see anything about the witness. We we're talking about the witness, but there was nothing really hyped about said witness. So it's like, okay, the, cool. That, that's I cool. I think wait on this one. Where it's like LIFO, when LIFO was shown, everybody was like, oh my God, I love it. Let me buy it. I'm getting it now. This is going to be hyped. We're going into an infinity war right now. We're and that's what they sold us. That is, they even said, like, so one of the people talked about saying, this is like the Infinity War of Destiny. But Infinity War, we fought, they fought Thanos. We didn't fight the Witness in Lightfall. We didn't, I mean, we lost in the most anticlimactic way. All, we did all this useless, pointless stuff just for n it, nothing to have any impact. And you could say thing, same thing, but there was impact. There was emotional gravity. There was uh, death and sadness and character development in the Infinity War. That's why people feel like Infinity War was the best Marvel's video. And Endgame, like the whole, that was like the conclusion of the Marvel series. And that's why people have not really enjoyed Marvel movies except for like one or two of them. Because I feel like the story should have just stopped at the Endgame. But... <laughs> 
It, like, we didn't even get that equivalent in Lightfall. It was just, that's how bad Lightfall was. We're, and, then, and then Final Shape will be in-game. Final Shape didn't have that. And understand, Lightfall had that hype because, A, Lightfall looked dope. It's a dope name. Yep. Right? And, B, Witch Queen popped really off. was a good expansion. And it was, was fantastic. Ramp up for it. And, again, I'm just basing this off of, because we do the, we watch the reveal every year, the big buy doc and everything. And The reveal was poor. Where we get really hyped. And I just noticed, like, this past year or last year. It almost makes me feel like they didn't even have the game finished enough to give real content to the trailers to really amp it up. I feel like the most emphasis was on a couple of guns, which is usually pro typical. And then just like the new subclasses. But overall, it felt like how much of the game is was actually complete because we get we got no emphasis. Like it would have been even interesting if we had like a new activity to do and they even showcased that. But it felt like we really didn't see anything in that that video. It was so underwhelming. You're like the hype was just. And so many people were saying, I'm going to wait until after this expansion rolls out. There's Which is the smart thing to do. To in the final shape. There's exactly. No boss, no stasis, no strand, no hype. Yeah, no hype. And dude, do you, how, how much better do you think the, the pre-orders would have been had there been a red subclass? I think there would have been a little bit more. Released, you know? I think no, it would have been just that more. Here. Like, Beyond Light, Lightfall brought new subclasses, right? But yep. Witch Queen, the narrative was so good and there were so many great yep. things about witch queen so but the thing about witch queen it was building it was built upon a character that we've known for a while now this villain in the background that's this lore has been building towards and we finally got this entrance the witness is kind of relatively new like we've obviously heard about the darkness but the witness itself is kind of fresh and lightfall really should have introduced it like it like Thanos was introduced in Infinity War. Like you've heard, you've seen him, you've kind of heard him a little bit, but you've never actually got to know him. And in Infinity War, you you got you saw that he was a threat. The most threatening thing that he did, uh, uh, that Witness did in Lightfall, was that he did the finger wave, and that was it. And we're just supposed to be like, oh, he's cool. He's he's, he's we can't beat him. Like we don't even get an opportunity to try to fight him, and then get just like our butts kicked. It's just, it was, it's bad. There's no gravity, really. I don't know, man. I just, I kind of wish Bungie could just do it all. You know, if, guys, if these numbers are true, I'm concerned. My concern now is that this, this is not the first wave of layoffs that Bungie got. This past oh, no, I layoff, expect more. My concern is that this is one of perhaps multiple waves of layoffs. All right, I, I foresee that happening. Surprisingly, the number for all four emblems are still rising to this day. It highlights that the data derived from pre-order emblems does not precisely mirror the actual pre-order numbers, but there exists a solid correlation between the two. Our analysis also shows that the Final Shape expansion managed to secure roughly 15,000 pre-orders, 15,000 emblems yep. were applied to the profiles in the 15-day period starting from February 5th and ending on February the 20th. Bungie made an official announcement on February 1st, 2022, stating that the Witch Queen, a highly anticipated expansion for Destiny 2, had already Very surpassed highly. 1 million pre-orders and is on track to be the most pre-ordered expansion in Destiny 2 history. Although yeah, because it was hype. did not disclose the official pre-order figures oh. for the Lightfall expansion. I wonder we why. assumed that it also surpassed the 1 million pre-orders before or by February 1st, 2023, considering it had more pre-orders than the Witch Queen. However, for the final shape, the pre-orders... I think that's because people immediately, like that Bungie immediately saw the backlash unfold as people played the game. And then they realized, oh crap, this isn't going the way we thought it was going to go. And then the data came in and then they're like, yeah, we're not going to mention any of this. Haven't even come close to the above figures. The significant drop in pre-orders can be attributed to several causes. One of the reasons for this could be that fans are being cautious and waiting for more information about the final shape before that's making smart a decision, especially being cautious is always smart with Bungie. Fans. Exactly. The game post has reached out to Bungie for comment on this piece. Now, player sentiment, the delay, layoffs, yep. and a marketing void. There Finding it is. One of the best selling expansions in Destiny 2, and having broken the record for all time high concurrent players on Steam, Lightfall faced severe backlash. <laughs> it was also probably the most refunded and failed to meet expectations, even with its commercial success. This marked the beginning of a decline in player sentiment, and the situation was made worse yep. by the lack of updates to PvP content. The disregard for Gambit, a hybrid PvP-PvE mode, introduced in 2018, repetitive seasonal model, 
increased number of in-game monetization, and time-gated quests. The announcement of the Finder Shapes delay in late 2023 added a new level of intricacy to Destiny 2's already complex narrative. With the extended six-month wait, along with the 8% layoffs at Bungie, there was an undeniable feeling of uncertainty in the air, which also stirred questions about the expansion's development and the studio's ability to deliver a fitting end to this saga. So yeah, that's Destiny the big Bulletin thing. Actually, did this right there. Have you pre-ordered Destiny 2: The Final Fantasy? Yes, not yet, but I will. I mean, this is more details. Only 20k people though. But the trend is not that good. Plus, Destiny, Destiny Bulletin conducted a poll on X. On February 22nd, the poll received over 20,000 votes and revealed that 30.9% of voters are not pre-ordering the Final Shape expansion. 20.6% are waiting for more details on the expansion. And you gotta think, a lot of people who are buying it may also not participate with polls like that out of anger that... Because it obviously, people are making these polls and people are like, I, I don't like what you're trying to, to say. And so they don't participate in liking or anything like that because they don't agree with those kind of posts because they live in this world that nothing's wrong with destiny or bungee uh and so they all avoid posting and also this is twitter or x and a lot of people don't engage with that website anyways because i'm a cesspool which i agree it definitely has but i get a lot of some like destiny news from it so that's the only reason i have twitter is to stay in the know of what's going on with destiny if i did, wasn't for that i would probably stay way clear from it it so a lot of people are doing that so you can't you can't say 20k people is the whole community because it is definitely not expansion 22.6 percent haven't pre-ordered yet but plan to in the future and 26 it's data but it's just a point on the graph it's not the whole picture represents a fraction of the overall destiny 2 player base exactly it a general idea of the player sentiment regarding bungie it's just a point destiny franchise in a report from ign it was revealed that the player sentiment surrounding destiny 2 was at an all-time low with employees begging for necessary changes to win players back. yep Bungie CEO Parsons, we talked about that. also told employees that the layoffs Pete Parsons, the he loves his the players. The last year, as well as lower than expected pre-orders for the Final Shape expansion. Following the layoffs in late 2023, Bloomberg Jason Schreier reported that Destiny 2 experienced a significant decrease in popularity among players. As per the report, the game's revenue projections for the year were below 45%. Again, pre-orders are important. And very, a very. lot of the, the, the forward projections there are depending on those, those pre-orders. And so the 45%, we were all wondering how in the world, what were, we thought the projections were astronomical, but maybe it wasn't. With pre-orders being as low as what Charlemagne is projecting here, that makes a lot more sense yep. now, the 45% miss. Now, it's worth noting that the expansion sales aren't the sole revenue stream for Destiny 2. Since the past, which received a 20% increase in price in 2023, along with cosmetic bundles, dungeon keys, in-game monetization, a merchandise sale also played major roles in contributing to the game's revenue projections. However, due to low player sentiment, popularity, and engagement retention, it seems the monetization spending in the Eververse store from Destiny 2 players took a massive hit in 2023. Then comes the marketing void during the six-month-long delay period. And yeah, I think that's the, what they're about to say. I think all, a lot, there's a lot of people that are upset, and I'm one of them, about Eververse store, that they're seeing more content being put into the shopping mall than they are in the actual game. Like season of the wish, we have more content in the store than we did in the actual season because the coil was like the coil and the exotic mission was the only new thing we got this season. I'm not including the dun the dungeon because you had to pay for that separately. But if you wanted content from this season, it's in the store. <laughs> with a final shape, with no new announcements, details, or promotional initiatives for the upcoming expansion to sustain player engagement and interest. Yeah, dude. Ah. Uh... I'm I'm hoping like March they're gonna probably start ramping things up. Maybe April they're gonna. Start it's March now, up. so let's see. The whole way all of that was just handled was was so poor, you know. Uh, the whole thing's poor. Before in the past, but not in the way that this was delayed. The delays in the past was like, hey, here's the Vidoc, here's the review. We found out about the delay when all the leaks were coming out about people being laid off. Which those people didn't even find out in an appropriate way. People were finding out via Twitter before they found out. So I think Bungie handled the whole situation. Like the leaders of Bungie handled the whole situation in the most god-awful PR way. <laughs> like they literally took a shotgun, shoved it down their pants, and blew pulled the trigger. They didn't even bother try to handle everything appropriately. Like I would have announced the delays way in advance before firing people because you got to know that if you fire someone they have no obligation anymore to just keep silent people are going to like this is the world of leaks 
in the gaming community, leaks exist everywhere. From Nintendo to PlayStation, like, you gotta be smarter than this, thinking, oh, well, we had them sign a piece of paper. You are so stupid, and if you think that's gonna keep people from saying, you know, telling people things anonymously. Like, let's be honest. They should have 100% set announced way in advance the delays and got it out of the way but they shot themselves in the foot by doing everything in the god awful manner that they did reveal for the upcoming expansion and they, they would show those things we would get hype and then they would say to make this really worth it we're delaying things by a month two three months that would have been the smart thing to do that was okay because it was part of the buy doc reveal again the delay here was announced after the buy doc reveal yeah baby that was so stupid the layoffs and so we're, we're seeing all this bad news and stuff and yeah so a month later after mismanagement the layoffs happened the leak came out and a month later they finally announced it that is bad pr <laughs> that's what it screams now destiny's future of uncertainty no more Woo! annual expansions the revelation that bungie is transitioning away from the traditional seasonal model to embrace a narrative structure centered around episodes sparked concerns among players about the fate of annual expansions the backbone of destiny 2's overarching stories and content during the 2023 annual showcase Destiny 2 general manager Dan McAuliffe revealed oh. that episodes will mark the new way we are going to tell stories moving forward. This announcement was of course. raised questions among the fans about the future of the game's annual expansions. Even after six months, Bungie has yet to reveal any details about what the future holds for expansions in Destiny 2. One of the reasons behind this could be that Bungie only wants players to focus on the final shape expansions right now and sell as many copies as possible. I think I'm okay, guys, with that. I mean, at the end of the day, the focus should be on the final shape. Absolutely. So what follows afterward? Let's let's just let's just see how good the final shape is. Final uh, shape yes, is because I don't I don't. If the final shape is bad, one, I think 100 percent Sony's gonna take over. Two, I don't think people care. You could say that episodes are absolutely banging, but if half the people have left because the final shape, no one's gonna care. I'm gonna be honest. I mean, ten out of ten. A good example is the season of the wish, which is absolutely garbage. But the coil is one of the best seasonal activities we've ever gotten. But it's easily overlapped by all the trash that's been going on this year and the fact that people are jaded and the fact that the season was just nothing but reused assets. Uh, so it, it gets buried under all the garbage. And so episodes could be amazing, but if Final Shape doesn't pop off, it's just going to get buried. Not the best. If it's not the best expansion Bungie's ever given us, then. No one's it has to care about what happens no. after the final shape. If nope. we get another lightfall situation, or even if it's just a subpar ending to yep. the Darkness Saga, yep. it don't matter, man. It this doesn't. doesn't this matter. this has to be Forsaken level. No matter what happens. All right, it has to be Forsaken level. The they even said it's going to be crucial in shaping the game's narrative, but also acting as a significant revenue generator for Bungie. The financial reality is clear. Annual expansions have consistently contributed millions in revenue, making them an anchor in Destiny 2 success all these years. While the upcoming episodes may offer a new way to engage players, relying solely on them may not be the most financially sound decision. Considering how resource-heavy Destiny 2's live service really is, a strategic approach that could make sense is releasing a couple of episodes for a year or two. This would allow Bungie to redirect resources toward developing a brand new Destiny installment. Now, from the player's perspective, annual expansions are more than just content drops. They help generate excitement and hype within the community. These annual showcase events are essential in building anticipation for future gaming content, which ultimately leads to increased sales and revenue, something crucial for Bungie right now, which is currently facing yep. financial challenges. Now, thoughts on the past, present, and the future of Destiny 2. Destiny stands out as one of the enduring live service games, not just surviving for nearly a decade, but thriving to the extent that it transformed Bungie into a multi-IP entertainment company. Bungie now juggles at least three different IPs simultaneously. Destiny, Marathon, and Project Gummy Bears, alongside engaging in multi- But we also gotta think that they cancel Matter. Like, it, people have completely forgot that game was, or that thing was supposed to exist. Matter got canceled. Uh, Marathon it, uh, apparently is also not doing so hot. Like, Tarkov people have played the game and said, you know what? Not that fun. Not that good. And it's an extraction shooter. Who are you gonna get the most advice from whether an extraction shooter is fun? People who play extraction shooters. Imagine that. Multimedia projects. The success of the Witch Queen expansion played a pivotal role in Lightfall's impressive pre-order numbers. The success of Lightfall's pre-orders can be attributed to various factors, with the Witch Queen playing a major role. The Witch Queen expansion laid the foundation for heightened anticipation, introducing the witness and intensifying the light versus darkness narrative. The brand new subclass strand further acted as a major selling point, creating substantial excitement within the player base, an element notably 
absent in the final shape. That was us talking about the subclass. Why the final shape pre-orders are lower than expected. Similar to how the Witch Queen expansion played an important role in Lightfall's pre-order success, I think one of the main reasons behind low pre-orders for final shape is Lightfall. The bad oh yeah, Lightfall murdered. Has cast a lingering Let's not get it fizzled. Lightfall and the seasons we've had, like Season of Defiance, Season of the Deep, uh, Season of the Witch was the, probably the best season, in my opinion. Uh, season of the Wish is probably the worst season we've ever had in ever Destiny history. I, like, I would think, I personally think us King, I, I think Osiris, the expansion of, of uh, Osiris was much better than this, than Season of the Wish. That's not, that's pretty bad. Like, Curse of Osiris was significantly better than this season. Uh, granted, I do think the Coil is the best activity we ever had. But overall, when it comes to, like, story and just content, man, it's a, it's a bold claim, Cotton, I know. But my God, this season of reused assets, at least Curse of Osiris wasn't reused assets. Diminishing the overall enthusiasm for the upcoming expansion. Although the final shape is set to introduce three new light-based supers. The lack of new... And that's coming from the, the, the expansion that gave us uh, two tokens and a blue. I'm just telling you, that com that's coming from the expansion that gives you two tokens and blue. Subclass and enemy race adds to the muted reception for the player community. Dude, man, ain't nothing but facts being said right here. Yeah. Let me repeat that again. The lack of a new subclass and an enemy race adds to the muted reception from player community. Even more. I don't understand why they couldn't just like they've already got the foundation. Like I know that the, the witness was is uh, all the race became one, so that race doesn't exist. Couldn't he, like, break apart or manifest taken versions of his race? Couldn't he just use the darkness to create other things? Like, the Nezirak versions that Rolk and Nezirak, like, clearly they could make minions based off those characters. Like, take all the disciples, make versions of, like, the, I don't even know what, what you would even call them, like, tormentors. They're based off like scions and whatnot. Couldn't you just take that and make reimagining and create a race from that? The darkness minions. Like, why? Why? Why can't we? Why is everything got to be a mini boss and we can't just make actual enemies based off all these darkness creatures? It could just be, it doesn't have to be a race. It could be like the covenant, right? The covenant was made of different races in Halo and it worked. Well, why couldn't they make different darkness versions of the different races? That are like, we got the Tormentor. We've got these little mini sergeants that are supposed to be support. Why can't we make other like little minions grunts made from the darkness? And they're just, I don't know. I, I feel like it wouldn't be hard to do. They just, they're lazy. More than not getting a new subclass. When we found out that the pyramid ships were just empty and there was no new alien race inside of there. And that killed it. Like the whole like emphasis of like, oh my God, they're on armies at our door. And it's just pyramids. Like, why do the pyramids work? Why even is the pyramids are just there to make the witness look better than he is? <laughs> it make it's supposed to be more threatening. But if the if the if the pyramids are empty and it's his subconscious controlling them, it's like me walking around and having airplanes fly by me because I'm using my mind to like. I don't know. It just seems really stupid in hindsight. And there was not going to be some huge freaking battle. And what, we're going to just be fighting Hive? Now, although the final shape is set to introduce three new light-based supers, the lack of a new subclass and enemy race adds to the muted reception for player community. The impact of the delay in reported layoffs of Bundy has also played a role in the low pre-order numbers, as players opt to wait more details before committing to a decision. This two player count is declining and will most likely continue to decline after the final shape. As much as we all want the final shape to kickstart another golden age for Destiny 2, I think this is unlikely to happen. It's true that Bungie is trying to make this upcoming expansion the best it has ever released. I hope they do. Ignore the fact that regardless of how exceptional this expansion might turn out to be, it's going to be the final Destiny expansion for many players. As someone, Very true. someone deeply invested in the Destiny community, I've encountered numerous comments from devoted fans who have said that the final shape is the end of their journey with Destiny. The Almost there for me too. Is undoubtedly the desire to witness the conclusion of the narrative arc that has unfolded over the past decade. The exactly. It's been notice noticeable throughout the life all year as we move through the each season in 2023. 
There's been a consistent dip in player numbers. The game post analysis shows that the latest season, season of the wish, exemplifies this decline. Market I can just tell he's like rocking back and forth as he's reading because he's just trying to get through it. And this is exactly why I'm not reading it because I would be the same way. I get when I'm like impatient, I'm like, I just want to get through this. Let's get to read all this. I sit there and I rock. So he's like the really just like one peak for a seasonal release. <laughs> just something uh, I've noticed behavioral wise. 94,670 players ever. Oh my God. Yeah. These are all the seasons, guys. Undying, Don, Worthy, Arrivals, Hunt, Chosen. Again, some the spikes are in tandem with the yes. expansion. That's why you see the big spikes, right? You know what's so crazy is that there's been so many good things that I've liked this season. The dungeon has been an absolute banger. My favorite dungeon Again, I've ever done. The coil. Oops. Again, the dungeon does not go in tandem with the season. You have to pay for it. It is separate. People need to stop pairing them together. They, they don't coexist. I mean, they coexist, but they're not mutually combined. They're mutually exclusive. A wonderful activity. The loot's also been really good. The and loot's the all right. We're continuing to get annual expansions even after the final shape. Ever since I will say that I've grown to like the dragon armor a little bit better than, than I initially thought. Announcement that Destiny 2 will adopt an episodic structure post, the final shape. Speculation arose among players regarding the possibility that this expansion would mark the final expansion to be released in Destiny 2. In a recent video titled The Truth About Destiny Hey, we Project, did re react on that video. They claimed that the final shape would be the last ever big DLC featuring the last ever big raid. Something yep. I find highly unlikely for a couple of reasons. Oh! First, annual expansions are one of the primary revenue streams for Destiny 2, consistently generating millions of dollars each year. Even by considering only half of Lightfall's estimated pre-orders as standard edition sales, the revenue surpasses 50 million. In the current financial climate, that's a bold claim, Cotton. Financial challenges and potential Sony takeover concerns, abandoning such a revenue source seems improbable. So I believe we will continue to get major annual expansions after the final shake. I, they're looking at it from a from a business standpoint, but the fact that they're struggling to get this expansion out. I do not expect a big expansion from them in a while. I think they're they are truly trying to push for Marathon. I truly believe Marathon is they're trying to make Marathon their baby because I feel like the team that currently is working on Destiny is tired of Destiny. Secondly, the team and umbrellas. Bungie has specialized teams and umbrellas dedicated to Destiny 2's live service, such as player journey, Nexus, and scenario, overseeing different aspects of development. As an example, Nexus encompasses sub teams like Team Epsilon and Team Delta with Epsilon handling seasonal content and Delta focusing on the main campaign. If the strategy is to only release episodes moving forward and no major expansions at all, it means Bungie would have to redirect all expansion resources towards untested episodic content. And without proven financial performance, it's a risky move. Well, that's why they're pushing more for microtransactions. That's why they've got the shopping mall up and running so that they can get the pay pigs to pay the rest of the difference. Moreover, Bungie houses the RAD, Raid and Dungeon team, that focuses on delivering raids and dungeons, the pinnacle in-game activities for Destiny 2 players. Given the long-standing integral role of raids in Destiny's expansions, it is- Listen, Bungie has, couldn't even confirm whether we, we can get more, we can get old raids back. They haven't even confirmed that. So if they can't even give us a like, yeah, we're looking into it in the future, they can't even give us the basics of that, tells me that they have no plan. It's highly probable that we will continue to see big raids and dungeons after the final shape. As stated above, a plausible scenario supporting the no expansion argument could be Bungie releasing episodes for a year or two without an annual expansion in between. This strategic approach would allow Bungie to reallocate the expansion resources into the development of a new Destiny game. That's cope. Ooh, I'm not hopeful, guys. That is cope. Not, I don't think we're Talk about someone who doesn't understand Portland, Destiny. Man, I would love it. I would, lo I would yep. love a D3. Now, conclusion. I, I think that is absolutely copium. That is the most copy, copy, copium I've ever seen. The fact, you know what's going to probably happen is that they're going to either move those people over to Marathon once episodes come out, or they're just going to fire them. I mean, they've already fired people already. People, big names, big names. I mean, look at all the, uh, Salvatore, or Salvatore, he got fired and they just did it so they can replace him with someone else. Like, let's be honest here. It's about money, and you got to think about money. And if you've pumped out your last expansion, you're going to let either push those people to your new baby, or you're going to fire them. So I expect after Final Shape, 
we're probably going to see some some layoffs, if not after it's complete. Like I, I, I feel either after it or before it's released, we're going to see more layoffs. I'm going to come back to this video if I'm correct. If I'm not, I'll be, I'll, I'll feel dumb to myself. The response to the light fall and the impact of the extended silence along with the wider industry landscape all contribute to this complex narrative. Destiny 2 fans are eagerly awaiting the gameplay reveal for the final shape in April along with the free two-month content update Into the Light. Yeah, and I'm sure that's going to be... To the future. I'm it sure Into the Light isn't going to just be a bunch of chores like the wishes. Like, if it's anything like Riven's wishes, it's not actual content. It's just doing the content that's already there and it's just boring chores presented with both challenges and opportunities with over 650 employees working on destiny excluding contractors and partner studios bungie aims to deliver an unforgettable destiny experience this summer however uncertainties from the revenue side loom large and how the game will fare in the coming years remains to be seen good reporting man i like this uh, i mean that he's pulling he's not just pulling numbers out of thin air i mean this is something that we rely on a lot of people rely on in the community Charlemagne is a big resource for all of us. And the fact is, guys, that if this, these numbers are actually true and Final Shape comes out and it is not good, then, you know, Sony's probably about to uh, take over a bunch. Slap that like button like your mama told you. Right. Yeah, I mean, I'm going to 100% agree that I think people are going to just move on if the Final Shape doesn't pop off. And that's the bomb dollar. People, people are going to speak with their money, hopefully, for the most part. And the tr reality is, I, I I think there's a lot of copium that they're going to make Destiny 3. I don't think that's going to happen. I really do feel like they're hoping for Marathon to take over because I think it's the Halo effect. They're tired of Destiny, and they want to venture into new territory. So I would, I would hold my breath. But I'd be happy to see... If, whoa. I'm flying now. Goodbye. <laughs> I'd be happy to see that I'm wrong, but... I don't, I, there's no proof to show that. And well, I'm Mr. Gaming Counselor. Let me know in the comments section what you think. And as always, game out.